keep smiling because the more you smile, the more people begin to wonder exactly what you are up to. This is my special way of welcoming you to Yofuma Solutions, where we engage in thorough tutorials concerning critical mathematical issues. Well, in today's presentation, we want to look at sequences. Uh, so, uh, sequences. When you ask what exactly is sequence, when you say sequence, what exactly are we talking about? Sequence can be looked at as a list of objects or things in an order. But in the mathematics class, we want to consider sequence as list of numbers that are in order. Good. Now, having looked at limit uh, the sequence, we want to move on and look at uh, certain terms that will be necessary as far as this particular uh, topic is concerned. So, the first term we want to look at is um, epsilon. So, which we denote as this. So as we move along, we will be coming across a certain term that we call epsilon. And another one is uh, delta. So we have delta, so which is written as this. Um, we have for all. Okay, so its symbol is. So as we move along, we write something like this. You know, it means for all. Right. Then there exists. There exists, so we have this representing what we refer to as uh, there exists. Uh, having done that, we want to look at how to denote sequence. So, sequence is denotation. The uh, sequence uh, is denoted as uh, this. So, so, anywhere you see this symbol, that means we are talking about sequence. So we either have this or we have this. So n equals one. So infinity. So these two are the notations as far as the sequence are this concerned. Good. Now moving on to something interesting. And that is a limit of sequence. So let's talk about limits of um, sequence, limits of sequence. So to better understand the concept of limits of sequence, it is appropriate that we recall our knowledge in the limit of a function. So for instance, if you have the Cartesian theory and uh, we have a certain function, and um, we have the domain value, that means it's the x value, uh, the x axis, and the y, this is a certain function f of x. And uh, assuming this is e, and uh, this is noted as l, the limit of the function at this point means that as um, you know, this is the area, so as the domain values, that's s, gets closer and closer to e, you see that the function is also growing and it's also getting closer and closer to f. So which you write as limit of f of x. And as s approaches e is equal to f. Now similarly, before we're talking about uh, limits of sequence, it means that the sequence is actually converging at a point. And uh, if that point is denoted as e, then we mean that the limit of a particular sequence as n approaches infinity is equal to e. Right. So it means that the, the sequence is actually converging at e. Now with this, it has its equivalent statement. Now the equivalent statement of this, so we we'll write something like this. The equivalent statement of that um, is to say that given any epsilon positive, so we're giving epsilon positive, so we write epsilon positive like this, epsilon greater than zero. So we're giving epsilon positive, so this symbol you recall means what? There exists. So there exists. So 
capital N, big N, which belongs to the set of natural numbers, such that for all small n greater than big N, then we have the absolute of the sequence. So we look at the sequence that we have. It is as with n. So the absolute of the sequence minus its limit. So we say that at this point we say that the limit of this sequence equals a. So the equivalent statement is saying that when all this is in place, then the absolute of the sequence minus its limit should be less than epsilon. So that's basically the definition of limits of uh, sequence. Alright, so we'd like to take an example and see how things will play out. So example one. Alright, so prove that The limits of this particular sequence, which is 2n squared plus 1 divided by n squared plus 3n as n approaches infinity is equal to 2. Now, the requirement of this particular question is not for us to find the limits of the sequence because here yeah, the limits of the sequence have been found already and it is given as 2. But all that we need to do is to prove that it is true that the limit of the sequence is 2, exactly as it is already. So we need to go to this arena and look at how the limit of the sequence is stated, follow through with its equivalent statement, then I arrive at something like this. And when we arrive at something like this, then we are sure that this particular sequence has its limits to be equal to 2. So let's go. So solution. So limit of um, 2n squared plus 1 divided by n squared plus 3n as n approaches infinity equals 2 which supposes that given um, any epsilon greater than 0 then there exists n, which is a function of epsilon and um, belongs to the set of natural numbers such that for all n, that's small n, greater than big n, then we want to say that, so we watch what is here, we're saying that the sequence uh, and minus its limit, that's the average, so we bring the average symbol. So in this case, what is our sequence? We observe that this is a sequence. So we have two n squared plus one uh, divided by n squared and plus three n. So we have the sequence there, and minus the limit. So our limit, as given in the question, is of two. So we have two here, and we say that this one should be less than epsilon. That is our duty. We will not just write the epsilon and say that we are finished. We will continue from here until we get something less than what epsilon. Right. So we can move on by just simplifying this aspect. So we have this to be equal to. So we have the absolute. Remember that this 2 here is equal 1. So we can pick our LCM to be n squared plus 3n. Right. So that. Uh, when this goes here 1, then the numerator becomes 2n squared plus 1. Then here is minus sign. So this will go here. 1 here goes into this. n squared plus 3n times multiplied by 2. So we're going to have negative 2 into brackets. n squared plus 3n. So the absolute. So, Alright, so. Let's move on. See whether we successful in doing this.
Well, looking at these aspects, you can expand the brackets. So we have a limit of 2n squared plus 1. Then minus 2n squared. So this gives us minus 6n. Minus 6n. Then divided by the we have n squared plus 3n. So that is what we have. So this can nullify this and we uh, realize that the resulting value becomes 1 minus 6n and divided by n squared plus 3n. Beautiful. We are on first. And uh, we realize that this is an average symbol. And when we do away with the absolute symbol, you realize that we are having 1 minus 6n divided by n squared plus 3n. And where n is any natural number, so when we start something natural numbers, 1, 2, 3 into this, we realize that the numerator of the given is negative. But we have placed that when values go into absolute symbols and come out, they come out as positive values. So what we want to do at this moment is just negate the numerator so that we have negative 1 minus 6 n. So here it's all in the average symbol, n squared plus 3 n. Now, doing so means that we will now have this to be negative, this will also be positive. So that we have 6 n now minus 1 then divided by n squared plus 3n in absolute. Now, we can do away with the absolute confidence because whichever value you substitute for this, which is a natural number, the resulting value is always going to be positive. Right, so you can say that this is actually equal to 6n minus 1, then divided by n squared plus 3n. You see that all along we've been using equal to equal to equals. But the actual lesson is saying that when we get this, then it should be less than epsilon. It should be less than epsilon for us to actually conclude that yes, the limit is equal to A. So it means that at this point we need to find out how possible we can introduce the inequalities and that's less than. So let's see how that is possible. So well, this is fraction. One is the numerator and what the denominator. Now if we have something of this nature and we want to bring the inequality sum, which means that you say that what is here should be less than what we write next. If that is the case, it means that what you are going to write next is greater than what is here already. So with fractions, when we are able to reduce the denominator and increase the numerator, then the fraction we are going to get after, after that will be what? Greater than the initial one. So we say that whatever is here is going to be less than. So I'm going to um, increase the numerator. So if you look at the numerator here, it is 6n minus 1. So I'm doing away with the minus 1. I'm not subtracting the minus 1 again. So I now have 6n here. It means I have increased the numerator. Then I am reducing the denominator. So the denominator as it is here, I have 6n, n squared plus 3n. So I'm removing the 6n, the 3n, leaving behind n squared. So I have and this is true mathematically because we can talk about the fact that when we have 3 to our 4 and we want to show that we can get another fraction from this so that that fraction is bigger than this we can go ahead and increase the numerator so if I increase the numerator to 4 and then I decide to reduce the denominator to 2 see that at this point I'll be getting 0 0.75 and this one is going to give me 2. I realize that this one is less than 0 0.75 is less than 2. So our uh, result here is correct mathematically. Right, so moving on, 
Okay, that n is here and is here, so we can reduce it. So you see that what is here is the same as 6 divided by n. Because it is reduced to epsilon. Then in the definition, as we have it here, we are told that there is a certain small n which is greater than big n. It means that for us to actually arrive at a solution to get something like this, we need to introduce big n. So big n here is actually small as compared to n, the small one. So in doing so, we say that this should be less than 6, then big n. Alright. So we have 6 divided by what? Big n. Now, we are at the final aspect where we have to introduce the epsilon. So we don't really know how we introduce that, but we just go and hide something and say that okay, let's say 6 divided by big n is equal to epsilon. So we quickly make n the subject. So making n the subject will give us n to be equal to 6 divided by epsilon. Then when we do that, then we claim it and run here and pretend that we know it's already. And say choosing n to be equal to 6 divided by epsilon. So meaning that when we substitute uh, this for n here, we're going to have everything to be less than what epsilon. So once we've been able to show that all that we have is less than epsilon, then we can conclude that therefore the limit of the sequence limit to that, that is 2n squared uh, plus 1 divided by n squared plus 3 as n approaches infinity is actually equal to yeah, so we've been able to conclude that the limit of the given sequence as n approaches uh, infinity is equal to 2. Alright, so everything has been proved. Thanks very much for taking part in this uh, tutorial. Uh, we shall meet again in our subsequent lessons and talk more about examples of limits of uh, sequence. Thank you very much.